Hello everybody, welcome to the webinar today on advancing tissue cytometry from image to results with Tissue Gnostics and FCS Express. Today's webinar is presented by Alex Barang from Tissue Gnostics and myself, Sean Burke from DeNovo Software. Uh, we're really excited to be talking about some of the cool new technologies uh, from Tissue Gnostics, uh, the partnership that FCS Express and our DeNovo Software and Tissue Gnostics have uh, gotten together for, and being able to analyze some of uh, this really nice uh, and nicely segmented imaging data over in FCS Express. So to get started on the webinar today, um, I just want to give everyone a little bit of background about what we're uh, here to discuss today and what we're going to be going over. And then I'm going to pass the webinar presentation over to Alex, and uh, he's going to be talking about the technology from Tissue Gnostics Instruments. And then I'm going to be coming back after that to uh, talk about how to work with the image cytometry experiment data files uh, that the Tissue Gnostics Instruments and softwares uh, can now produce and how to open them up in FCS Express 7. Uh, but to kind of start, Tissue Gnostics and Data Nova software uh, really, you know, uh, have done a really great thing. We've gotten together. We have this new distribution agreement to provide FCS Express image cytometry with new Tissue Gnostics instruments. Uh, and really where we see that uh, kind of partnership and intersection going, intersection going is helping researchers seamlessly move uh, from images and segmentation results uh, to final publication quality reports and results in FCS Express. So again, this agreement kind of brings together all of the powerful technology from the IF and IHC imaging uh, with some of the more advanced data analysis tools that FCS Express has to offer. Now, any systems that are purchased from Tissue Gnostics after November 1st, 2020 are eligible to receive a license of FCS Express image cytometry. I'll, uh, you know, we'll make sure that we have the information for Tissue Gnostics up here at the end of the webinar, so you can reach out to them directly if you have questions. Of course, you can reach out to our team at the Novo Software as well. And again, today's webinar is going to fo focus first on the Tissue Gnostics instruments, the software, the deep learning segmentation and automation, and then we're going to come back and talk about that intersection with advanced analysis and reporting tools in FCS Express image cytometry. So with that, I want to turn the presentation over to Alex here. I'll make you the presenter, Alex. Welcome to the webinar. We're really excited to be uh, working with you and the team of Tissue Gnostics uh, to put this together today. Hey, Sean. Thank you for that, uh, for that introduction. Uh, do you see my screen? Is set up? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm here to give you guys an introduction to Tissue Gnostics. I've been with the company for, I'm in my seventh year now. Uh, I've came from Los Angeles. I'm in uh, in Vienna at the moment, working at our headquarters. And um, yeah, let's give you a, a brief introduction to the to the company. Um, I'm going to first show you just a little bit of what we uh, about the the company and um, the software and the hardware. So um, this is our company in, uh, in Vienna. Uh, we are 17 years old. We have installations on 30 countries and on six continents. We have an international footprint and um, we have offices in uh, Los Angeles. That's where I'm from. Headquarters is in Vienna. Our uh, uh, Asia Pacific division is in Hong Kong. And uh, we have an e USA East Coast division uh, as, as well. And our software development is in uh, Romania. So um, our products are also ISO certified and products are CE marked. But one, uh, one part of this slide that I really wanted to uh, make sure that uh, is understood is that we have 100, uh, 1,500, over 1,500 research publications that have been made possible by our uh, our systems, our tissue cytometers, whether that's a scanning system or a uh, or the image analysis software, more importantly, um, those were all all uh, essential in these in these pu reference publications, and those can also be found on our website. So, if there's uh, a question you have, if you want to see if there's been some research done on a tissue fax system or using tissue fax uh, tissue gnostics uh, image analysis software, you can just go on our website and uh, and search, there's a search function. Search for something that's, uh, that's similar or along the lines of what you're researching. Maybe it'll inspire you. 
So um, that's a little bit about our company. And just to give you an idea of what our tissue fax systems look like, these are um, these are whole slide scanning systems. They come in many different configurations. And the part about this, these scanning systems um, that makes them so unique is uh, the is the software. The software drives all these different components that come from different uh, different OEM partners, and uh, they enable a a very automated and user friendly workflow for very fast, high quality scans of whole slides and uh, well plates and cell cultures. These systems are modular. So what you're seeing here is a very basic configuration of a tissue fax system. You have an eight slide stage. You have um, a nose piece with up to seven objectives, uh, 10 filter cubes on the upright systems and two cameras. So you can do bright field and immunofluorescence scanning. You can also combine this, these systems with uh, LED, high powered LED light engines uh, for very fast uh, flu immunofluorescence scanning. Here's another another image of these systems, and uh, they're modular. So what's really important here is uh, the software enables a multitude of configurations that enable whole slide scanning. So that means that means there are three different parts to scanning a slide. It's a preview scan, uh, two point so a low magnification preview scan, a tissue detection, and a high resolution. Um, high resolution scan of uh, of that tissue detection. So you don't waste any time scanning empty areas of nothing on the slide. You scan only uh, the parts of the slide that you're interested in, the tissue. And these are images that, uh, that we get out of these types of automated scans. They're consisting of hundreds or thousands of fields of view that are automatically stitched together. Um, and the stitching is something we're particularly proud of because of how seamless it is. And this is a, I think a mouse kidney, you can barely see any stitching artifacts. Um, so multiplexing is also possible. Five color immuno, uh, uh, a five color immunostain is seen here and stitching artifacts are rare. And yeah, so this is the other, another another configuration. This is a an inverted tissue fact system. Uh, so this is for scanning slides as well as cell cultures and well plates. And these come in, uh, they can come in a plus configuration. Plus usually implies uh, bright field and a fluorescence scanning uh, capability. Fluo is only for fluorescence and histo is one camera only for uh, bright field. So they can come in all these different configurations. And um, the workflow is really what's important here. That allows us to scan slides as well as well plates. And here you can see the, uh, different fields of view that are stitched together automatically. And if we zoom in, you really can't see where those uh, images are stitched together, but there are those grid lines again. And uh, it's really it's really a, a nice way of, uh, of scanning images. Another configuration that these systems can be built with is a confocal spinning disk. And again, that's made possible by the TissueFax software and the workflow. The workflow is what enables us to extend that capability even to confocal scanning. So we can do optical sections and uh, any number, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and you can also define the thickness of those optical sections. You can combine this system with 120 slide loading system. So what you're seeing here on the left is a an automated slide loader. So you can do, uh, you can scan up to 120 slides in one run and that means you can scan bright field you can scan fluorescence slides or wide field fluorescence uh, so wide field fluorescence or confocal slides in the same run and you can also color code samples and let it do its job over the night or over the weekend and you can come back uh, the next day or the, or the next week and have a digitized uh, 120 digitized slides um, this system also comes also in the eight slide configuration for the upright and for the inverted slide scan. So what you're seeing at the top is the confocal spinning disc. And there's this really big arm that holds it in place and makes sure that is it does not move because uh, you don't want to have a confocal spinning disc that moves. Another configuration with a, um, 
as convocal spinning disk is seen here on the inverted system. We can also incubate that. So we can add a stage top incubator as well as a uh, one of these large format incubators with uh, CO2 control, temperature, humidity, and O2 control. So this is a pretty uh, this is a pretty nice setup. I like this. Anyways, um, what do these scans look like? So the confocal uh, scanners are again the same type of workflow applies here. So we do a field of view by field of view scanning. Each of those fields of view are stitched back together to create a digitized slide. And then we can move in, zoom in, and just enjoy these uh, high resolution slides. And uh, this also applies for cells in suspension. So uh, this is a these are HIV infected macrophages that were also scanned with the uh, with a confo uh, confocal slide loader in uh, in Boston. So here you can see the different optical sections, plus three microns, so up at the top uh, to negative three down at the bottom. Actually, that's inverted. So anyways, um, yeah, the, uh, the last configuration I wanted to show you is the multispectral configuration. So this is made possible by a liquid crystal tunable filter that can be put between the camera and the photo tube of the microscope. And this, what this allows you to do is to effectively remove autofluorescence uh, from tissue samples when you scan them. So this is done using a so-called lambda stack. So you can obtain multiple wavelengths per for, per channel uh, and multiple ranges of wavelengths for ch per channel, and then you can define a spectra for each channel. So a uh, uh, a spectral um, a spectral histogram for each channel, and then uh, you can subtract anything that's not that specific signal. So this is what you would get beforehand. So a very, very bleached sample. There's lots of uh, lots of bleed through between channels, and you'd use a uh, uh, an unmixing tool that we developed. Um, and this is a spectral unmixing engine, and you would get really, really beautiful um, scans like these where you can very clearly see those different channels. And uh, yeah, so that's the that's the spectral unmixing uh, add-on for the Tissuefax systems. But what I really wanted to get to here is the analysis software. So the analysis software is what truly makes us unique as a company because we offer uh, image analysis at a very high level as well as um, scanning systems. So. You've already seen our scanners. They come in a multitude of configurations and um, can be upgraded over time as well. So even if uh, if you start off with a, a very basic system configuration, they can be upgraded over time. Meaning, a confocal uh, con you can have a confocal scanning system and put it on a very basic system configuration of Tissuefax or Tissuefax Plus or Tissuefax Histo. and a system like that can grow with you as an institution or as a lab over time. Right, the nuclear segmentation, we'll start with that. Um, so this is what our company was founded on. It was founded on an algorithm for nuclear segmentation. Our co-founders were uh, frustrated <laughs> students, I think at the time, and they uh, were just tired of manually counting nuclei. So they, um, they got together and they founded a company based on a nuclear segmentation algorithm and a um, analysis software that can measure um, the expression of uh, channels, uh, fluorescent channels and bright field channels in, uh, in, in these digitized slides. That's actually why the scanning systems were, were developed afterwards because we needed higher resolution to uh, analyze those samples more accurately. Anyways, uh, here what we see here is a uh, colon section stained with KI67, uh, a well-known pro proliferation marker in brown and the hematoxylin in blue. So the question here is how many cells are proliferating? And um, mostly experts' uh, estimations can range from 1% to 40%, which is mostly the problem that, uh, that those are estimations. And so what our software does is it eliminates any, any estimating. And uh, our nuclear segmentation algorithm will go in and segment each of these nuclei after you do a, a, a spectral unmixing of the two colors. Those two colors are spect spectrally unmixed and then 
converted into monochrome images so we can work based off of their signal intensity on a linear scale, so black to white. And um, once we have these nuclei segmented, we can measure the expression of the brown channel using the contours of the nuclei that we found. And what this enables us, uh, uh, to, uh, this enables us to get a observer independent measurement along with a tool that looks very similar to flow cytometry. This is a, a the, the famous scattergram. You'll see that in all of our image analysis software and it's all, probably also why uh, de novo and Tishinostics partnered up. It's because of our uh, <laughs> our tastes, I think, in, in image analysis. So, uh, or at least in flow cytometry. So this scattergram uh, consists of obviously of the, uh, the, the famous cutoff. You set your cutoff uh, using a, a, a um, isotype match negative control in your experiment, and you can apply that to your, the rest of your sample. And you always get an observer independent measurement. So within the software, these are two screenshots. Um, there are two very, very uh, uh, useful features that a lot of our users really love, and that's the forward connection and the backward connection. We have a digitized image, uh, so a slide, and we want to measure the expression levels of uh, fluorescent channels in, uh, in, these, in these images. We do a nuclear segmentation. As you can see here, we have these green lines encircling each nucleus. And we can measure the marker, uh, the, the channel intensity levels for each of those events, each of those nuclei, uh, and see that information in those scattergrams. So each of those nuclei uh, have a corresponding dot in the scattergram. When you take your mouse and double click on a nucleus, it'll light up. It'll light up in each scattergram that it's being measured in, as you see here. So this little red blinking dot is what you would see. So that's the forward connection going from the image to the data. And the same can be done going backwards. So you can draw gates, custom gates in scattergrams. You can draw, um, you can draw squares or you can draw uh, custom shapes in scattergrams as gates. And you can also take entire quadrants of scattergrams. So the upper left or um, the entire left side or the upper uh, quadrants. And you can view all of those uh, nuclei at the same time in the image encircled in a contrasting color. So uh, we have the green unselected and the red are selected cells that are found within a gate or a, uh, or a, a quadrant of the scattergram. And that's the backward and the forward connection. So this gives you a very a nice way of uh, interacting between the image and the scattergrams. So this is your first, uh, you're putting out your feelers into the into the software and you can really get a, uh, a nice uh, interaction with the software and uh, start beginning analyzing your images. So phenotypic characterization of tissue infiltrating leukocytes. This is, a, this is another example here of, uh, of tissue cytometry. There's another colon section here. Uh, uh, immunofluorescence here, we have four channels, DAP, PCD4, 68, and FOXP3. So those are three leukocyte markers. Here we have our nuclear segmentation applied to the image again using the DAPI signal. And um, here we would then measure the different, uh, the different channels. This one is the CD4. We have a cutoff at 65 and we have a, a gate set for the CD4 positive cells. And we can do the same thing for measuring the CD8 positive cells as well. Only we can take uh, we can take input gates and put them into a new scattergram and find rare cell types. So we can find co-expression, do a co-expression analysis. We can find CD4 positive, FOXP3 positive T helper cells in this example. So we can use uh, input gates here. We can take uh, nuclei from one gate of a scattergram and create a new scattergram and measure different different expressions on uh, on that channel. So another really interesting and also uh, a pretty new feature. This came out. Uh, this was released in StratoQuest this year. So StratoQuest is our uh, high-end image analysis software, which is for more for contextual image analysis. What I've shown you so far is uh, can be done in HistoQuest and TissueQuest. Those are single cell image analysis software. It's very streamlined uh, and it's a, it's a refined workflow for single cell image analysis. What I'm going to show you now is, uh, is what we can do in StratoQuest, which is 
a culmination of everything that we have learned over the years and everything that we know about image analysis put into one software development platform. So this software development platform, StratoQuest, includes AI solutions, one of which is a deep learning nuclear segmentation algorithm and a machine learning classifier. These are extremely powerful tools when used uh, uh, in combination with each other, and they require the absolute minimum user input um, and require uh, a basic, very basic understanding of uh, image analysis. So normally, if you have, uh, you know, you have a complex image analysis that you would like to do on your on your image, you would normally need to know something about a process behind uh, processing images, which is pretty complex in some cases. In this case, for example, I'm going to show you the uh, the deep learning nuclear segmentation. This is a, an immune organ. Uh, I think it's a lymph node. And here, if you're familiar with uh, immune organs, they can be very, very tough to analyze nuclei, or at least uh, segment them. As you can see here, it's really tough. I already have a headache just looking at this. Um, and uh, looking at the DAPI channel here, it just gets worse. But the algorithm that we've come up with, the the deep learning nuclear segmentation is based on a deep learning uh, neural network, and it's been trained on very, very tough to to segment uh, images just like these. And literally, the only thing, the one thing you need to do is select a model and run it. There's nothing else involved here. It's one of the most amazing things I've seen in this industry <coughs> for segmenting nuclei that are this tough. And so. If you take a look here, you can, it's not, uh, I mean, it's, if I zoomed in, the image quality would probably deteriorate a little bit uh, for the sake of this PowerPoint. This is, an, this is re a really amazing result, and there's really no effort on the user side for um, segmenting these nuclei. You select the model and you run it. No parameters, it just runs. So the tissue classifier, whoops, oh no, I have some automation built in here. Um, I forgot to delete the automation. So this is a bone sample, and uh, you can see there are tons of structures here. It's a bright field sample. We've got multiple colors here. I mean, lots of different shades of pink and blue. Um, this is uh, very tough to analyze. Um, we could go in and, uh, and do nuclear segmentation and try and find all the bone marrow, for example, but there are metastructures in here that are that span hundreds of fields of view that we would that we would like to segment uh, from the image. So we have structures here like the uh, the growth plate, we have urethrocytes here, we have uh, we have a uh, bone marrow, we have uh, mineralized bone, we have chondrocytes. This is uh, there's tons of information here, but the machine learning classifier allows us to segment these uh, these different structures based on painting. So what we're doing here is literally uh, using your mouse. You're using your mouse and you're just uh, drawing uh, directly on the image. Sorry, this automation is giving me a hard time. <laughs> um, you're drawing directly on the image and we can select uh, up to seven classes. In this image, we have seven different classes of tissue that are automatically um, uh, segmented from each other. And you can see that here very nicely. And this is uh, this is based on machine learning. So we have uh, the the machine learning classifier is very easy to use. You just paint, uh, you select a class, you paint directly on the image, and uh, and the, the the algorithm learns from your from your brush strokes. So the last uh, the last example here that I have is a really nice example of contextual image analysis made possible by StratoQuest. And uh, this is what will what will will lead into into Sean's Sean's part of the webinar. This is another colon section. It's a colon cancer here. And in this in this uh, in this image we have the DAPI in dark blue, the epithelium in light blue, CD4 positive cells in red, we have FOXB3 in green, and KI67 in white. And here the question was, where are the uh, CD4 
positive FOXP3 positive cells, so CD4 FOXP3 double positive cells, and where are they in relation to the epithelium or the, 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 the cytokeratin marker, so the tumor? And that's a pretty that's a pretty deep question here. The first thing we do, just to show you the the process that StratoQuest goes through, uh, it's an automated process of uh, of multiple steps. So this is the first one, tissue detection. And uh, the second step, of course, is nuclear segmentation. If we zoom in, we can see the nuclei here. Some of them have not been selected because they're too dim. Uh, they they could be coming from another uh, another layer in the cells, or another, or they've been cut off the process of cutting this tissue. The next step is detecting the uh, cytokeratin marker. So this is, you can see this in the in the orange, the orange contours here. So we have the, uh, the cytokeratin marker completely detected and using subtraction, we can combine those masks and find the stroma and putting them all together results in an image like this. So now we have all the nuclei segmented, we have metastructures, and now we can start to use uh, a what's called a, a proximity areas uh, engine in, in StratoQuest. And this allows us to use a grayscale uh, and apply that to a distance. So we can say, okay, zero equals completely black. That is the beginning of any cytokeratin, uh, any orange areas, that's a zero point. And we apply a, a grayscale to a distance and any objects that come up on that grayscale from zero to 255, um, 255 being completely white, will give us the exact location of where they are in terms of their distance to an object. So we can uh, we can put all that information to a scattergram, and instead of looking at expression levels, we're looking at distances in this case. And here we've applied different uh, multiple gates. As you can see on the very bottom, we have one to 25 microns. Each of those dots is a cell, a CD4 positive uh, cell that is one to 25 microns uh, away from the next, the closest epithelial tumor. And using the backward connection, I can see all those cells in red that are between one and 25 uh, microns from the next epithelium, all those CD4 positive lymphocytes. And I can do the same thing for nuclei that are 25 to 50 microns away, 50 to 100 microns and 100 to 155 microns. This is a really in-depth uh, analysis of uh, uh, our contextual analysis of this tissue. And this is a completely automated algorithm in StratoQuest. These algorithms can be custom made by us. They can be custom made by you. Um, uh, so we offer it as a service. If uh, you have a very complex project that you need help with, we can make you an algorithm with a customized user interface. And uh, and you can just apply it on your experiment of samples that are all hopefully the same. And uh, you can also be trained. You can also learn how to use the software on your own. You can create algorithms like these uh, for your users. If you have a, a core facility, um, you can create algorithms like these on your own, uh, along with user interfaces if you'd like. And yeah, so that's my presentation. This sample, uh, yeah, so StratoQuest also can be used standalone. All the image analysis software can be used standalone, but StratoQuest in particular uh, is also compatible with MATLAB and ImageJ and also uh, Python. And uh, they, the image analysis software can be used standalone as well. So if you have, if you already have a scanning system, a TICE, Olympus, a Leica, 3D Histec, or Perkin Elmer, or an operatic scanning system, you can, uh, you can uh, import those samples seamlessly into the software. So we are we're open for collaborating with uh, with other scanners on the market. So, yep, that's uh, that's basically my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will hand it back over to Sean. Great, thanks, Alex. And I'm sure folks have a lot of questions for Alex. Uh, if you could, you can type in your questions in the questions and answers box. Uh, what we're gonna do is in about 20 minutes, uh, we're gonna come back and uh, answer all those questions that have come through, but don't forget to jot them down and uh, write them in so we got them when we're ready. And uh, again, as you know, as Alex mentioned, there's a lot of um, you know, really great stuff, um, you know, segmentation routines, deep deep learning algorithms that are coming from uh, these software products. 
you know, there's some really great visualizations within the Tissue Analytics software platforms. And where FCS Express kind of fits into this picture is uh, a bit like Alex described, you know, they, um, working with the two-dimensional plots, working with the uh, phenotyping, working with gates, uh, getting ready for publications and presentations, uh, that's where FCS Express really excels. So we kind of are, are picking up where, um, you know, some of that data analysis stops in uh, the, the tissue agnostic software, and we're trying to take that beyond in FCS Express. So again, we're going to spend the next uh, 20 minutes or so talking about uh, pulling some of that data from the tissue agnostic instruments into FCS Express. Uh, but just as a reminder, you know, uh, what's going to happen is folks that have purchased any tissue agnostics instrument since November 1st, uh, they're going to be able to uh, access this, this license from tissue agnostics of FCS Express to provide this complete acquisition to image reporting. Now, one place to start, you know, I know we have a lot of folks that are uh, on this webinar coming from the flow cytometry side of things. They've probably heard of us for over the last 20 years. Uh, we have a lot of folks on this webinar coming from the image cytometry side of things, and they might not know much about flow cytometry. Um, so our company, DeNovo Software, we've been around for over 20 years developing data analysis solutions. Uh, in the beginning, it was just for flow cytometry, but uh, maybe about seven or eight years ago we started delving into image cytometry uh, because really the same uh, you know the same way and the same workflow that you'd use for doing immunophenotyping with flow cytometry is very similar to the type of workflows that you'd be wanting to do with image cytometry. Now image cytometry just has the added advantage over flow cytometry that you have a picture of a cell right and you have increased resolution with flow cytometry we just get dots on a plot and with image cytometry we get dots on a plot but we can actually relate them uh, back to the individual cell or the spatial context on an image now with FCS Express, we have global support and applications teams. Uh, there's gonna be kind of unrivaled support for any of the questions that might come up as you're performing analysis or you're reporting data. Uh, there's thousands of customers representing all fields of research from academic to biopharma uh, that are using FCS Express for flow cytometry, for image cytometry. And really what you're gonna see today with FCS Express is that we're fully integrated statistics, graphing, and reporting all in one software package to help facilitate getting results, right? So kind of moving beyond even just simple uh, dot plots and histograms, we're able to take that data, plot it into spreadsheets directly in FCS Express, create bar plots, create IC50 curves, all of this stuff that updates immediately as you're moving gates. So you're able to see when you move gates in FCS Express where the images fall back on the tissue sections, but also you can see, you know, p-values updating on your bar plots. You can see the, the changes between regions of interest and samples. Now, the other thing is that we have a Microsoft-inspired interface. When we switch over to FCS Express here in just a minute, you're going to see that it looks just like PowerPoint, right? And that's shamelessly by design. We know everybody who's on this webinar today has probably used PowerPoint at some point in their life. And that means that learning FCS Express is very quick and it's very easy because you're already familiar with those tools. Now, when it comes to the image analysis workflow, I like to kind of give everybody a little overview of, of kind of how that works. And as Alex mentioned, the, the tissue Gnostic systems are going to be doing the image acquisition. They're going to be doing the image segmentation using those, you know, really cool deep learning algorithms that you, that you saw just previously. Uh, the results are going to be, uh, the features and the parameters for those segmentation results are going to be extracted. And then all of that data can come over to FCS Express for, you know, additional additional data analysis, for report generation, and for communication and publication. Now, the way that we get that data from StratiQuest, HistaQuest, and TissueQuest is through the image cytometry experiment file format. And there's an option in each of these software packages to export to .ice file format. Once you've done that, you can simply pull that data over to FCS Express. You can load it up in the software and you can get started uh, you know, working with us there. Now, 
with FCS Express, there's a lot of uh, you know important capabilities. You know, I mentioned the image cytometry analysis and the flow cytometry workflow. Uh, we have that same direct data to and gate to image linking that Alex showed off in the tissue Gnostic software. So you're not losing any of that with our reporting. Uh, we can report with batchable exports. So if you have lots of individual uh, regions of interest or lots of tissue sections, I mean maybe you're using that 120 slide slide load. Order, right you can actually batch through all of those reports very quickly uh, we also have data transformations in FCS Express so working with tools like Tisney, Visney, clustering, PCA, Flosom um, you know these are all tools that have uh, been you know heavily used in flow cytometry for working with more complex immunophenotyping data sets but they're certainly applicable to the image cytometry world in fact we're going to come back and look at a Tisney uh, performing some image cytometry data in just a little bit um, and again, you're going to get high quality plot displays. We're going to take a look at that, all the statistics that you might need. And again, just like in Microsoft Excel. So we're going to go to some data here. We're going to open up FCS Express. We're going to go over uh, some of the basics about how to use some of the tools in the software, take a quick look at batch processing, look at the integrated spreadsheets and graphing, and then importantly, how to perform uh, TISNI on image cytometry data sets, which I think is one of the, the kind of really cool features that we can work with today. So what I'm going to do is uh, open up FCS Express, and uh, you're going to see here that I've got a um, image already opened up. I've got some data loaded here on FCS Express, but just so you get a feel for how this data gets loaded up in the software, is that when you have uh, data that's coming off of TissueQuest or StratoQuest or HistoQuest, um, essentially a file called a .ICE file is going to be created. And when you're ready to work with that in FCS Express, you can simply drag it and drop it into what we call the data list. You can actually drag and drop that directly into this uh, analysis area as well. But when you've dragged and dropped that, you can click on this uh, data file. It's going to switch to that file of interest for whatever plots that you might have up, and you can get off and running with your analysis. So. When we work in FCS Express image cytometry, uh, we have this full forward and what we call backgating and flow cytometry, uh, moving from kind of dot plots to images and even from images down to individual events in what we call a data grid. So what we have here is just a very simplistic example of showing you, you know, we've created a gate here in green, we've created a gate here in red, and over in what we call our picture plot, we've backgated that information. Uh, we're showing color displays for those events. So what will happen is as you adjust a gate in FCS Express, and we'll make this uh, image a little bit bigger here so, so everybody can see it, but as you adjust a gate in FCS Express, let me get some of this stuff out of the way here for you, you're going to see those images updating in real time. So it's super important for imaging. We have this high resolution data, we have spatial information, we want to be able to use that um, and get information from that in real time, and FCS Express is going to enable us to do that. Um, now you may have seen down here in what we call our data grid, these are the, each of the individual uh, cutouts or cells that have been segmented in this image. And as I was moving this green gate around, that little list was updating. Well, what's going on there is you can take a gate, you can apply it to that data grid, I'll change it to the red gate, and we can zoom in on any of those uh, cells of interest. So if we grab a few events, if we grab a population, and we can start getting information even at the single cell level uh, from any of our gated populations. Now, additionally, you can create regions of interest, or you know, in flow cytometry, we call these things gates on the image, right? So as I move this region of interest, or as I expand it and adjust it, you know, the cells that highlight in blue are the cells that fall within there, of course. But if I wanted to examine this region of interest uh, for DAPI versus you know the mean intensity of the Texas red channel here, again, what I can do is apply that region of interest gate over to our flow cytometry plot, and even if I want to, I can create multiple uh, kind of versions of these plots, and by using the gating tools in FCS Express, if I wanted to, you know, even create another regions of interest over here, uh, we'll do that. And again, we can apply one region of interest to one plot, one region of interest to another plot, and we can start getting the statistics that we need to compare these regions of interest, see what's going on in these different subsets and populations. 
But again, the way that we work with this data in FCS Express, I showed you an example of you know some plots that were here. It's very simple. It works like PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, you'd insert pictures and text boxes and shapes. In FCS Express, we can do all that as well. But if we want to work with dot plots and density plots and bar plots, things like that for our image cytometry data, what we can do is insert, say, what's called a color dot plot for our data. Um, and this is going to insert a plot. Uh, for all of the imaging data. It has all of the different parameters that were um, gathered from the image segmentation. And I can come over here and then also insert what we call a picture plot. And the picture plot is gonna be that image that I had showed you, right? Um, and when we have a picture plot, it doesn't just have to be one channel, right? We can look at all the different channels uh, that were acquired with this particular uh, data set. If we want to work with multiple picture plots, I can just simply duplicate these things. And if I want to look at DAPI on one plot and Texas Red on another, of course I can do so. And again, with any of these um, kind of basic uh, uh, two-dimensional plots here, you can always change again to whatever parameter you want. Um, one kind of nice thing in SCS Express is if you start typing in a parameter name, it's going to jump you to that parameter of interest. Uh, you can start visualizing that data. But really importantly, we know that with image cytometry data, you want the flexibility to adjust these plots because sometimes you have very few events. Sometimes you need to change your axis scaling. Sometimes you need to change what's gated and back gated. So what we allow you to do is you can right click on any plot and you can choose format. And what this will do is it will give you the same uh, sort of formatting options uh, that you're going to have available in the formatting tab in FCS Express, just like in, uh, again, in PowerPoint, you have a uh, formatting tab that's going to uh, allow you to change any of the kind of visualizations on that plot, any of the text, any of the other um, sort of things that can be edited. And FCS Express is going to allow you to edit each and every one of those particular um, uh, facets for a plot. So we'll do, again, the right-click format. And what you can see here is with this plot, I may not want linear scaling, right? So a lot of biological data, uh, when we're looking at images, works really well on a log scale. So I can simply come in here and change to a log scale. And now my data is log distributed, all right? Um, with these images, sometimes you don't have a lot of events. So maybe you want to increase the dot size, right? So we can increase the dot size. We can get that display in real time. And again, if we wanted to come in and even pick and choose which particular populations are gated or back gated on my plots, I can turn on and turn off that stuff at any time. So what this again now allows us to do is generate these kind of reports, uh, put together this information, and really at any time you can take this and you can export it. You can go out to high resolution TIFFs, you can go out to PowerPoint, you can go out to PDF. And just as a quick example, uh, we'll go out to a PowerPoint presentation. And again, we're gonna be switching from FCS Express to PowerPoint here, and you can see now we're in PowerPoint. So for this you know, basic analysis that we did, we have high resolution graphics that are ready for publication. They're ready for your lab presentation. Whatever it is that you need to do, already out in PowerPoint for you, making that process of moving from images and acquisition to results uh, very quick and seamless. So again, that's some of the basics, right? That's creating gates, inserting plots, you know, doing some of that uh, kind of routine stuff that you're doing from day to day. Now, Alex had showed us an example of uh, working with StratiQuest and, um, you know, actually an image from StratiQuest. And I think one of the really cool things that they can do in StratiQuest, and it's one of the things I learned uh, kind of working with the folks at Tishinostics is working with this distance engine parameter that they came up with. Um, this is such a cool algorithm, again, being able to find the distance um, that an event or a segmentation object is from another object. And again, we can pull that data into FCS Express. This is the M12 nuclear distance in micron. So again, uh, events that kind of creep up the scale here or further away uh, from some sort of segmentation marker, uh, in this case, a, a tumor cell. So things up here are kind of very far from that. But what we can do is really kind of pick up where uh, StratiQuest software leaves off, but we can do the same sort of analysis, right? Um, you know, of course, we have the, the gate 
to uh, image linking. So if we make this image a little bit bigger and just like in PowerPoint, I'm gonna bring this to the front. Um, what we're doing here is backgating all of these populations. And as we change any of um, you know these gates, these uh, markers on this histogram that are gonna kind of show us um, you know, the distances between, uh, you know, different markers and things like that, the information updates in real time. But again, we can go a little bit further and we can say, all right, well, let's look at some of our other markers, our CD4 versus FOXP3. Let's look at our CD4 versus KI67. Let's look at nuclear area. So we're looking at size versus different things. So if we create gates on those items, we can apply those down to the same sort of distance plot that was created up here. And then we can start looking at distributions. All right, so how far away are cells that are CD4 negative, FOXP3 negative from the initial tumor? How far are four, uh, cells that are CD4 positive from our tumor? How far are cells that are CD4 positive, FOX3 positive from our tumor? Now, where FCS Express goes above and beyond for this is that we can take this information from these plots, put it into a spreadsheet directly in FCS Express, which you can see here. And again, these spreadsheets are linked up directly to the data. So as I'm moving the CD4 positive gate, that spreadsheet down there is updating for us. But again, what we do is take that again, one more kind of step above and beyond. We can link those spreadsheets into something like a bar chart. Here we're comparing dual negatives, the four positives, the four positives, Fox v, Fox 3P, three positives. And what will happen again is as we move any of these gates, that information that you might have painstakingly having had to kind of copy and paste out to Excel, copy and paste out to Prism, do things like that, is actually updating in our final results. So that bar chart down there, as I move any of our gates, as we change samples, things like that, is updating for us immediately and in real time. So before I jump into TISNY, again, I just want to, you know, focus on that, that spatial backgating, right? So again, you're kind of getting used to working with this in StratoQuest and HistoQuest and TissueQuest. Um, you know, we can take all that information, backgate it on the plots in the kind of same way in FCS Express. Uh, you know, if you only want to, say, visualize things that are really far away from our initial tumor, you can see we have those kind of highlighted in orange here. We can turn these on, we can turn these off. Uh, so again, that that you know, working with that context of spatial information is really important. Now, the other thing that we can do in SCS Express I think is really unique is work with uh, kind of clustering algorithms like TISNY and VISNY and PCA, uh, SPADE, you know, eventually we're gonna have FlowSOM and UMAP in here pretty soon. Um, but the way that this works in SCS Express is if you wanna perform some sort of clustering algorithm like TISNY, we have a transformations toolbox where you can do this. What you do is you simply load up a TISNY transformation, you pick and choose which parameters you want included. In this case, we'll do FOXP3, CD4, and KI67. And then you just, you know, you can leave the rest of the variables as they are as, as default, as they are here. Uh, you can mess around with them to see how your clustering looks. But when I click calculate TISNY, uh, what's going to happen is that FCS Express is going to run this algorithm on the data set it's going to calculate uh, what's called TISNY X and TISNY Y parameters to try and cluster this data in some sort of meaningful way. And what it's going to arrive at, again, is these charts where the heat of a particular parameter, a particular marker of interest, is displayed as a heat map. So here, these kind of uh, very bright red uh, populations here are positive for FOXP3, this bright red positive uh, area is positive for CD4, but it's negative for KI67. But the really cool thing is that when we work with TISNY and VISNY and these algorithms in FCS Express, we don't lose that image to gate linking, right? We set a gate here on this particular population, and that's what we have backgated on the image over here on the left. That's what we have backgated over here on the image in the middle. So as we move this gate around, we can actually in real time examine what these different populations look like from our TISNY cluster. All right, and it's kind of interesting to see in this particular clustering, you know, we can see that this little tail of the chart here, it's kind of these uh, cells that are highlighted in green outside of, you know, whatever this is in the middle. Um, but if I come in here, 
and I highlight where they're Ki67 positive, well, we can see that that's a cluster of cells that are Ki67 positive. Um, when we kind of uh, look at this in the bigger context of the entire image, we get an idea of kind of where those Tisney clustered populations fall, and there's, you know, some very clear patterns happening with this data. So, you know, our Tisney clustering is working very well for, uh, you know, this sort of analysis. And again, you know, you can, you don't have to work with 10, 15 parameters for Tisney analysis. You can do it with a smaller number, but as you do, you know, build up the number of colors that you're kind of working with on your tissue gnostics instruments as you're including different and more segmentation parameters and you know adding more and more to this kind of list of markers and things that you can measure you know working with some of these you know higher dimensional data reduction algorithms uh, are a very great way of, of kind of working with this data so with that, I know uh, we've had a lot of questions coming through already. Um, I, I am going to come in here and kind of summarize a little bit about what we saw today from the FCS Express side of things. Uh, what we're really aiming to do is streamline that analysis to reporting. So, you know, being able to create charts and graphs, being able to get PowerPoint and PDF and high resolution TIFF images of your analysis so you can move to publication, you can mu move to communication. Eventually, we'll all be going back to conferences sometime soon. You can bring your data there and put it into a poster. Uh, keeping that image to data linking, that's so important with all the tissue gnostics instruments, reusing templates, working with the integrated spreadsheets. But really importantly for FCS Express, I think the Microsoft Office-like interface makes it very easy and makes it very easy to use and learn, uh, even if you're kind of a novice with flow cytometry, a novice with image cytometry, you can come in and start getting some results very quickly and easily. Now, uh, when it comes to FCS Express, you can always grab a free demo of the software from our website. Uh, you can always contact our support team at support at denovosoftware.com to get some help as well. But before we go to some questions here, I wanted to say, you know, thanks for attending the webinar thus far. Um, you can contact the Tissue Gnostics team after the webinar or the DeNovo software team after the webinar. Again, DeNovo software, it's support at denovosoftware.com. At Tissue Gnostics, it's going to be office at tissuenostics.com. You can reach us on the phone numbers listed here. Uh, but again, many thanks for uh, coming out for the webinar today. Uh, we are going to switch over and take a few questions. So give me a moment. Let me pull up the questions list. And uh, again, thank you for your attention and time today.